two sides of an ang two sides and an angle of a triangle are given. Determine whether the given measurements produce one triangle, two, or no triangle at all. Solve the triangle of results. Okay. So on these triangle problems, let's first draw a triangle. And um, then we use that and fill in the information. So it's always capital A, capital B, capital C for the angles. And then the sides across from the capital A is little a. Across from the capital B is side little b. And across from angle C is side little c. So the sides and angles that match are across from each other. A is across from A, B across from B, C across from C. That's how we do these problems. Okay. So um, getting back to it here. Oops, wasn't so good. It's still not so good. Yeah, fix this triangle. There we go. All right. So now, um, what did they give us? They gave us little b, or capital B is 41 degrees. So this angle right here, 41 degrees. Little a is 4. And little b is 3. So, okay. Now, what are we, what are we going to use to solve this triangle. Well, notice we have a, we can't, that we cannot use, there's no Sokotoa here. Why is there no Sokotoa? Because it's not a right triangle. You can only use Sokotoa when you have a right triangle. We don't have any 90 degree angles. So it's either law of sines or law of cosines. That's why we learned law of sines and law of cosines, because that's how you handle triangles that are not right triangles. You've got to use law of sines or law of cosines when you don't have right triangles. Sokotoa is only for right triangles. Okay, so we have, notice, B across from B, and we have... Right, we have B across from B and A across from A. We're wanting to find, I should have mentioned it, we're wanting to find A up here. See how it's all about A? So we're trying to find angle A, which is across from side A and B from B. So that's going to clearly be law of sines. We're going to use, whoops, that's not the right thing here. We're going to use law of sines because... We have two angles and two sides across from them. So that's always law of sines when you have two angles and two sides across from them. So I'm going to say then that the sine of B over little b is the sine of capital A over little a. So that's going to be the sine of 41 degrees, little b, capital B, over little b3 equals the sine of capital A, I don't know that yet, over little a, which is 4. And then you solve this by cross-multiplying. So 4 sine 41 degrees is 3 sign capital A and now to solve for capital A you got to divide both sides by 3 and that cancels out and so we get sine of A is and grab it on my calculator I'm getting 0. 0.8747 Good enough, 0.8747. Now, I'm trying to solve for the capital A. So what am I going to do there to solve for capital A? Can I just divide both sides by sine? Just get rid of that sine? No. I hope you know you can't do that because this is not multiplication. This does not mean sine times A. It's not multiplication, so you can't get rid of it by dividing. No, that's not going to work. So what do you do then? Uh, instead, you, let me rewrite this, this is sine A, and this is 
seven four seven. How do you how do you get rid of this? We do need to get rid of the sine so that a can be alone. So how do we do that? We do sine inverse on one side and then the other, right? Whatever we do to one side, we have no choice but to, to do the same thing to the other. So these cancel. You got capital A, hit the buttons on your calculator. So sine inverse of 0.8747. So I'm getting 61.009 degrees. So that's angle A. So we found angle A, 61.009 degrees. Let me fill that in, 61.009 degrees. But here's the real trick. You have to remember that there is sometimes a second option. Let's look back up there. We can be tempted to grab this 61 right there and go, got it, answer B, we're done. But hold on. Remember that there is a second option. What's the second option? No, oh, come over here for a minute. Um, whenever we do sine inverse, let's just leave it there. Whenever we do sine inverse, we must check and, and get an get an angle. Right, we got an angle. We must check for a second angle option, specifically 180 degrees minus the first answer. So that's going to be 180 degrees minus the 61.009, and what would that be? I'm getting 118.991 degrees, which is basically 119 degrees. So 119 degrees is the second answer. So you have to remember, this is not easy to remember. You got to put it on your notes. This is, this is math and science. This is not easy. It's not simple. You got to remember to, to do that. So the second answer, um, but is it really possible in this triangle? That's the deal. So you always, whenever you do sine inverse, that's the key. Sine inverse, the tricky part about the sine inverse is there's a second possible answer. The second answer is 180 minus the first. So we did that and we got 119, but that is not always viable, meaning it won't always fit um, in the other triangle. Um, is the total less than 180 in the triangle with this second answer. That's the question. That's what we mean by is it possible? Right? It's not it's not you're not going to keep it if it if it makes the triangle impossible. So let's come down here real quick and draw the triangle again really quick there. All right, so we have the triangle again, and we're saying, what was it, um, 41, this one was 41 degrees, and we're saying, well, maybe this could be 119 instead of 61. Is that possible? What, what would that leave for the third angle? 119 plus 41 is 160. That would leave 20 degrees. Yeah, that's, that's possible. So that's um, less than 180. So yes, 119 is a valid possible second answer. Now, if this other angle had been something like, you know, 73, then when I added 73, I would have been over 180, and we would have said, well, no way, no way that that other angle could be 119. We would have thrown away the 119. 
that happens sometimes. We would have said there's only one possible answer. It's just the 61. The second option doesn't even fit in the triangle. It makes the triangle more than 180. But in this case, it does fit. Um, comes out 160, so 119 is a, a valid answer. So we have two valid answers. They are 61 degrees and 119 degrees. Let's take it back up here. So 61, and let me write it over in the side. So 61 degrees and 119. There's two possible triangles that would work. Now here's the two triangles possible, but they got the wrong crazy angles, don't they? And this just has one of the eight, well, it's only one triangle is possible. No, 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 there's there's two triangles possible. So it's it's a two triangles possible situation. So it's not one triangle, not one triangle, even though they've got one of the angles right, it's not a no triangle. It's two triangles, but it's not it's not those angles for A. No way. It's none of the above. That's a tricky problem. It's two triangles, but there's 61 and 119, which is not listed there as an option. So that is a tricky problem. There we go. And that's the key. Whenever we do sine inverse and get an answer, we must check for a second angle option, 180 minus the first answer. Get that, but then is the total less than 180? So it's possible or not possible. If it comes out more than 180, then it's not possible. You throw out that second answer and just keep only the first. That's when you get, that would have been the only one triangle answer if the second didn't work. We would have just kept the 61. But the second did work. 119 does work. There's two possible. So none of the above. That's tricky.